Hi, I'm Talia. I'm an online business manager at the Melbourne Freelancer. I'm really excited to be here where we're going to talk flamingos, turtles, game shows, and a little bit of business. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarolinga. And today, we've got a special guest who's as passionate about business as a flamingo as it's about extending. <laughs> <laughs> now you got me laughing. I really wanted to, 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 to talk about that flamingo story. Well, who we have today is the one and only online business manager, a cheerleader for solo business owners, and the kind of person who makes project planning sound like a day at the beach. Talia, how are you doing today? I'm very well. Thank you. I love that intro. I'm going to carry that around as my little hype squad. <laughs> Absolutely. As long as uh, it's got flamingos involved in it and uh, standing That's on right. the leg. So there you go. Now, for those that are meeting Talia for the very first time, she's the founder of The Melbourne Freelancer, or she is The Melbourne Freelancer, and she helps business owners transform their grand vi visions into reality while ensuring that they have more fun and freedom along the way. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Everybody is supposed to be in business so that their business is profitable and enjoyable, not necessarily just tied to your desk and tethered to your phone and not knowing what, where the next, um, you know, clients are going to come from and things of that uh, nature. Now, believe me, I've already heard a few stories um, of her crossing the road and um, the way she just <laughs> operates, you know, um, you know, in this city of Melbourne and no wonder her name. So she's got stories that are going to make you laugh, think, or maybe get a turtle for yourself because I hear she has one of those lurking in her room somewhere. So just stick around because I don't think you want to miss this episode. Natalia, you've already heard me mincing my words. I'm a little bit starstruck. I've seen your work and seen <laughs> <laughs> what you have been doing out there. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually became the Melbourne freelancer. Sure. Well, I sort of like to describe it as I did it by accident because I didn't think too much about starting a business before I started. So my um, work background is mostly in office-based roles, administrative project support, um, those kinds of things. And I was made redundant. I was working in government and there was a change of government, which means a lot of the staff have to go. Um, and so I was made redundant and I was thinking about what I wanted to do next and I was looking for work and nothing really sort of called out to me in what I was searching. And while I'd been working in um, corporate roles, I developed a personal interest in blogging. Like we're going back 10 years when it was the height of blogging and social media and personal brand was all starting to take off. And so I was hearing a lot more about people running their own businesses. And I thought, well, those people are going to need some help. And I'm really good at admin and projects and keeping things ticking along. So maybe I can do that. And that was about as far as it went. And I put the word out. I started chatting to some friends about um, the ideas that I was having. And one of my blogging buddies was holding a conference. And she said, well, how about you help me out with the conference so you can test out this idea of being a virtual assistant, um, see if you like it, see what it is like in the trenches and we'll go from there and it was at that conference that I met my first quote unquote real client because my friend had put me in the program and so right at the end of the day a lady came up to me and she's like oh, I need to leave but I've been wanting to chat to you all day because I really need a virtual assistant so can we have a chat here's my card give me a call and then she was gone again and it kind of all started from there <laughs> fantastic and uh, i mean so many people when given an opportunity to come and help or to come and assist or just to show up at a place they give up a lot of excuses and they never know what's in store for them but you took this opportunity with both hands and um, that was the start of it all oh, congratulations now a lot of people you know face um 
a lot of, um, you know, trouble transitioning from having to work for, you know, someone or, you know, an organization or as you were in the government to getting started in their own business. Because when you're working within an organization, you only facing that part of what you're doing. But when you now become your own business person, everything falls on your lap. What was that transition like? Mm -hmm. Um, I did a lot of things wrong because I didn't know better. And so I was just kind of figuring it out as I went along. I, I'm a real problem solver. I, if I find something that I need to work out, I'm going to work it out. So I did sort a lot of things out myself and figure things out myself. Um, Google was my best friend. One of the biggest things that I had to adjust to was staying in my chair and getting work done because particularly when I didn't have a lot of client work, that gave it sort of external accountability, I would, you know, you're at home. And so I sit at my desk and I go, oh, I'll just quickly tidy up. And so I potter off and do that. And then I think, oh, well, while I'm doing that, I'll put on a load of washing and all these little things and reasons and excuses. And then suddenly it's the middle of the day and I haven't been in my chair. And so I leaned into a version of the Pomodoro technique where you set a timer and you've got your time on and then you take a break and then you're back on. And that kept me in my chair. I used one, um, apparently it's Japanese, where the intervals are 52 minutes on and 17 minutes off. And that was really good because that gave me time to really sink my head into a task and then a slightly longer break to have something to eat or put on a load of washing or whatever it was that I was distracting myself with um, to just build that habit of staying in the chair and doing some work. Absolutely. You raise a valid point. I mean, home is your dwelling, you know what I mean? So everything that you've made comfortable or cushy around you is where it resides. And, um, you know, so many distractions are there. That's why in offices, it's just a gray wall and a few paintings and enough light for you to see and focus your work. But when you're in your home, you know, if you've got kids or if you've got pets or whatever it is, it's just out there to distract you. Now, with this uh, Japanese Pomodoro um, methodology, so you say it's 52 minutes and then 17 to relax and enjoy yourself. What is it that you right. doing? What is it that you're doing in that 17 minutes that constitutes relaxation? Um, I can't remember what it was back then. Now it would probably be I'm really big into puzzles. So I might check in and do a crossword or I've got a jigsaw on the go. So I might pop out and do something like that. Um, last week when the sun was out, instead of eating at my desk, which I'm still guilty of sometimes. I took my lunch and I went and sat on the balcony in the sun and just enjoyed a quiet moment. So uh, I guess it's about switching my brain to something different because then it kind of has a bit of a break and then you come back fresh. Absolutely. I quite like that because all work and no play makes Talia a dull, um, you know, girl person there. That's and right. So many people feel like you have to be constantly tethered to either your business or you know, sitting on your desk just to get work done and productivity actually rules out that if you're not taking time out to relax, you know, smoke, um, sitting down is like the the new smoking out there. So yeah, in totally. That, in that 52 minutes that you are concentrating and working, um, I've noticed that you describe yourself as part implementer, part cheerleader, and part accountability uh, buddy then what is it that you're doing for people and how are you balancing these roles to actually help your clients achieve their goals? Mm, I guess it could be all sorts of things. So um, all of my clients, we have weekly check-ins where we have a conversation about where we're focused both in like the current week, but also what's going ahead, because then we can sort of think about what needs to be done in what sequence. So that that checking in and communicating is really important. And that's also where the accountability can come in, right? Because, you know, I can say, well, you said you'd get the blog ready. How's that going or whatever it is. Um, and then 
I guess I'm a little bit unique in the way that I do online business management because often that is the person who sort of sits between the business owner and maybe their team or other contractors and that kind of thing. For most of my clients, they have just me, which is why I'm also an implementer because there's no one else to do it. And so we have the part where we're talking strategy and planning and projects and then I'll take a chunk of time and do some of the things that help bring that to life. So that might be setting up their online course platform. A lot of my clients have a membership or online course that they're running. Um, it might be building out a project plan. I spent a bit of time doing that yesterday for a client. It might be setting up some of their marketing. So I do quite a bit of copywriting and um, like setting up email marketing and automations and tags and all sorts of things. I could geek out for hours about all the little bits and bobs that I do. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think you take a massive load off of your client's shoulders because so many entrepreneurs are just visionaries. You know, they just have yes. an idea and all they want is to be seen on stage, seen on podcasts or on video or whatever it is that, you know, the actual um, entrepreneurship is sort of described as, but there's a yes. lot of work that happens behind the scenes, which basically entails people to, you know, like you say, implement and actually create the value that then allows you to be um, up there, you know, by, um, you know, as an entrepreneur. Now you've been in business for about nine years. And mm -hmm. what are some of the pitfalls that you've noticed that a lot of entrepreneurs um, you know, go through that actually stifle their business growth because nine years mm. is now close to 10 and not so many people go past the three-year mark. Yeah. Something I notice a lot in the virtual assistant space and something that I got very wrong as well is understanding how to price what you do um, so that it is affordable for clients but also reflects your value and allows you to actually earn a living. Um, because I started way too low all the way back then. And a lot of my current VA colleagues have the same challenge. Um, and it means you're working so hard just to make ends meet and you don't get a chance to enjoy what you're doing um, as well as all the other things that come with, you know, not having your money sorted. And then something that I see more broadly, it really is the mindset piece. That's the thing that's going to trip you up. It's, um, you know, having confidence that you're good at what you do, backing yourself, um, being able to get up and try again after something goes wrong because something will always go wrong. And I've always been sort of surprised and not surprised where this shows up for people. I had a client who charges something like $800 an hour. She is very good at what she does. And that is a bargain for the, the service that she provides for people. And she would still have self-doubt and get stuck and think, oh, is that too much or can I really do this or, you know. And so it just goes to show that's something that's going to come up all the time. No matter where you're at, no matter what's happened before, there's always going to be something that the little voice in your head that tries to sort of derail you and it's about being able to hear it and keep moving forward anyway. Mm, absolutely absolutely and uh <clears throat> so many so many people like you say really obviously end up chasing their own tail because you literally can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full and most of the work that needs to be done is the stuff that's behind the scenes but there comes now a part where people that are really good at behind the scenes type work are introverted they just want to work within their own space and yep. um, and things of that <laughs> nature whereas the extroverts want to be the flamingo that's out there that's doing its, its own um <laughs> thing now <clears throat> how have you managed to sort of balance that and um you know which side of the coin do you find yourself at that's a really good question so i am quite introverted and I say that I do my best work when I can, you know, grab a little stone and disappear into my cave and I'll polish it up and then come back to you and present this beautiful thing. Uh, and so partly I work with clients that understand that 
and they trust that I am doing the things that I'm doing and I'll come back with something great when it's ready. And I guess part of it too is I love one-to-one interaction. So I love to build relationships with my clients. I'd love to go networking now that I know that it's less scary because it's really just having conversations. I don't want to be on a stage, but I'm very happy connecting with people. Absolutely. Does that answer your question? Oh, absolutely. Because it's 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 in the conversations and it's in the interactions that we have with people. No matter how you end up doing the job, obviously you get paid for the value you bring to the marketplace. But so many people want to fixate on just the one particular aspect. So I'm introverted or I'm extroverted. So that's pretty much who I become. And um, yeah, you mentioned networking, which has... Um, been a big part of your um, success. Can you maybe yep. share some tips of how you actually managed to overcome this challenge? <laughs> so it really was a case of feel the fear and do it anyway. Right. Um, when I first started, I went to lots of networking events just to get out and about and talk to people and and discover this world of you know entrepreneurship, small business, what it's all about. And I still remember one of the first events I went to was a speed networking event which was actually perfect because it puts you, it forces you in front of lots of different people instead of having to go up to them and introduce yourself. But so part of that is you sit down and each person you say, hi, I'm Talia, this is my business. And to me, it felt like that first event and probably, you know, the first 10 events I went to, it came out like, hi, I'm Talia and I'm a virtual assistant. You know, like I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> and so I don't know if other people picked up on that, but the more I did it, the easier it got. And even now it is the best way to build my business. And so that's why I kept doing it back then. And I keep doing it now. Um, mostly because you get comfortable talking about it and that helps you sort of back yourself. Cause you're like, yeah, I do know what I'm talking about. This is a thing that I'm good at and I love to do. And it doesn't, in fact, it rarely goes directly to business. Once or twice I got in front of people and they go, that's exactly what I need. Like the lady at the conference I talked about before. But most of the time you're building the relationship and down the track it'll probably pay off in business, in a connection, in a growth opportunity, whatever it looks like. Um, but it, it's definitely something I still recommend to everybody is just get out, meet people, talk about what you do. Absolutely. I mean, half of the time, if people don't know what it is that you do, how are they going to end up hiring you? Now, you mentioned something, you know, like feel the fear and do it anyway. And fear just seems to be one of the, the uh, you know, the shackles that um, hold a lot of people back, you know, mm-hmm. especially in, in, in this society. See, when I came to Australia, Talia, I figured or I heard, or I was exposed to this whole tall poppy syndrome set up mm-hmm. that, um, you know, is prevalent in the society. I mean, it's everywhere in the world, but it just seems to have citizenship in, in Australia and uh, yeah. nobody has ever questioned it that way. Um, is, is, is that something that comes up, especially when it comes, um, you know, to, to your line of work, being an online business manager? Yep. (laughs) Even thinking today about our conversation uh, and where it might go, there were a couple of things where I sort of think, oh, can I say that though? Because it sort of sounds like I'm, I'm, you know, big noting myself and, oh, I don't feel comfortable with that. Uh, You know, so yeah, I agree with you. It's very pervasive in Australian culture. Um, We're allowed to be we're allowed to be good at something to a certain point. And then we sort of, if people think we're a bit too big for our boots, I'll be like, mm, nah, back you come. Right, right. But half of the time you've actually, I think you mentioned earlier that you just say yes and then you figure out things a lot later, you know, and yep. it's been a strategy that has worked for you. Even that conference that you went to and eventually you got a client Um, you know, out of that, so many people want all the facts, all the information, everything before they can actually jump on and say yes, or whatever it is. What's your sort of approach to, you know, that way of being? 
I am that kind of person. I like to have a lot of information before I make a decision. Um, and I have a couple of people in my life that I will talk through endlessly. They're probably so frustrated. And, you know, what about this? What about this? Okay, maybe this. And then I sort of get around to making a decision. And I have also been a person that um, sort of gets held back. I'm not going to do this till I'm ready. And and is it, I need a qualification. I need training. I need this. I need that. But that's changed over the years because I realized for a lot of things, the best way to learn is to do it. So you can read all you want about, I don't know, how to build a website or whatever it is, but it's all theoretical. It's not till you get in there and you're playing with the tools and you're doing the thing and then you see what happens and you see how it's going to work out and you learn from that. Um, so I think there's a place to be thoughtful and get some information, but if you find yourself getting stuck in, I just need one more course, I just need to learn one more thing, then you're probably going to stay stuck and you have to find a way to shake that out and move forward. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to fear and running a business and you working with someone who's maybe going through all of those things, I would suppose that you end up finding yourself as being their counselor or somebody who just tells them, hey, stop yep. it, let's go and do it. But you know, it's yep. it's probably something that a lot of people might not be capable of doing, but you have a background in psychology, right? And I do, yeah. Absolutely. Small business um admin and 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 counseling. Now, how do these qualifications actually enhance the way you support your clients? That is a great question. I think part of the reason I was always drawn to psychology, and I've also done uh some counseling study as well. And I think that's because of who I am naturally. I I find that I naturally hold space for people um, and am willing to talk things through with them to help them find their way uh, and that kind of thing. And I hope that when I'm working with clients, having that space to talk through any kind of doubts or hesitations, you know, you talk something through and it helps you process it and get past it. So I think that's part of it. And then also, um, when you're on a team, you've got someone. And so even if you're feeling a bit nervous, you've got someone in your corner who, who is saying to you, that's okay. Like we can figure out a way through this. And so it's partly that as well, that they've got me, they're not in it on their own and whatever happens, we'll figure it out together. So that can give you confidence to at least try something. Absolutely. I mean, in my culture, we've got this statement, if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. And I'm supposing this is one of the things that you bring to the table, because when you're, like you say, sitting in your office or home office or whatever it is, and a distraction comes in, and takes you away from your game, and all of a sudden, the whole day has just gone by, and you've got nothing to show for it. But then there's people mm. like yourself that are there to... Uh, hone it in and also really make it easy for people to be um, the best version of themselves. Now, um, yeah, when people maybe start working with you, you've got um, one of your products. I think you've got it on the site there, Content Clarity VIP Session. Now, what, yeah. can, people, what can people expect from this um, half-day session with you? So this was born out of... For a long time now, I would meet people and they would, they're the visionaries, like you mentioned before, and they say, this is where I'm headed. I know this, I'm super clear. This is where I am. And so we would get together and spend the day figuring out what is the pathway and where they need to focus and what some of their big rocks are on that journey. More recently, I've turned it into, um, it's more focused for people that are wanting to do an online course. And so they know that they have a lot of knowledge and experience that would turn into an online course, but they can't quite translate it. And so we get together for a period of time, like a half day, and it's sort of the same thing. And we we pull out what they know and we figure out how that turns into a course, what that would look like. You know, do you have modules? Do you have bonuses? How does it all tie together? And by the end of that, they've got sort of a top level course outline. And then they can also understand what do they already have 
and what do they need to create? And so then again, you've got that plan and your big rocks to move you forward. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you, it's just like if you are going somewhere, you know, you put the address of where you're going in the GPS, not the address of where you are, and then sort of navigates to that particular position. And mm. how can people get a hold of this? Because it does sound amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, on my website? I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll be putting in. I should have the... thought that through better. I, <laughs> I'm on Instagram. I'm in all the places people can find me, reach out in the way that works for them. I'm always happy to be be found in the, the forum that suits you. Absolutely. So I will put all those links in the show notes, um, especially your website, which is um, easy to remember, the Melbourne Freelancer. The Melbourne Freelancer.com. <laughs> Do you know, I got told that after I'd registered and started my business, I was about two years in and someone, it was indirect, but they were talking about business names and basically it's kind of the worst name that I could have chosen, but I like it. So here we are. <laughs> um, there's, there's one thing that a lot of people may not realize about a name like that. See, a name like yours is something that can be licensed. All right, because mm, it can true. it can pertain to so many other people. And obviously with what you have created, you probably have a system and a process that people can buy into. And that could actually be a franchise for different suburbs. So some people might not have an idea that a name like that um, could be um, a good thing. Or you could create a platform where freelancers can actually come in and people can come and work with them, um, depending on how big you want to make this. So there you go. I'm, I quite mm -hmm. like this. Now, what you now need to do is grow your personal brand. And I think that's something that I think, is it Flamingos that have taught you that? Yes. If you want, <laughs> want people to then know who the actual Melbourne freelancer is, right. you have to build that, um, um, you know, personal brand. W w what's it with Flamingos before we even? <laughs> so this started out as just a bit of a silly family joke right. and it's turned into my identity. I My sister was living in Adelaide and two of our brothers and me went to visit her and we went to the zoo and they had flamingos there. And I don't know why, but I was just totally smitten with fl those flamingos. I think maybe because I wasn't expecting to see them. We don't have flamingos in Australia. And so I was just like, what? There's flamingos here. This is incredible. How amazing. And then after we'd finished and we were back at home from the zoo, we were looking through the photos that we'd taken and somehow everyone except me got a photo with the flamingos. And I was outraged. I'm like, how did I miss this? I was so fascinated by the flamingos. And so then my sister had very small children at that time. So she would take them to the zoo quite regularly. And she made a point of always taking a photo with the flamingos and sending it to me to rub it into my face. And so, yeah, it just sort of, it started as this family joke and then somehow it's grown. And now everyone knows that I have a thing with flamingos. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Well, you could just Photoshop yourself and I mean, with the advent of AI and everything else, just put yourself True. in front with flamingos uh, or dress up as one. I you could be like riding a flamingo <laughs> with AI. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, you also you also did something with a game show um, that you. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. What's that all about? So there used to be this show on Australia on Australian TV called Million Dollar Minute wow. and it was a quiz show and for every correct answer you win a certain amount of money and then um, if you're the champion on the day you come back the next day and it jackpots to how much you can win. And this was right when I first started my business so I wasn't very busy and a friend of mine was unemployed and he had got the casting call and they said bring a friend or for the audition I guess. And so we did that and you had to do a few trivia questions and then if you got all those right, you would get interviewed by producers. And afterwards, my friend said to me, I reckon you're going to get the call back because everyone was so fascinated about your job because no one knew then what a virtual assistant was. So mm -hmm. they'd say, what do you do? And I'll explain it. And so it gives you a talking point. And so I did. I got the call back and we spent the day and I filmed my episode 
and I got embarrassing questions wrong. So I went into a negative score and I was like, oh man. Um, but I thought, oh, well, it is what it is. And then at one point I cashed in my points to get some money. So I thought I haven't walked away a complete loser. And I remember on the day you have to sign a release form and it says that you only get your prize money once the episode is aired. And I said to the producer, like, oh, does this mean if the show doesn't go on TV, I won't get it? He's like, yeah, but that never happens. If there was like some big national emergency, maybe we'd get cancelled, but it, it never happens. I was like, okay, no worries. And so I should have won, I think it was about $2,000, but about three weeks after that, before my episode aired, the show got axed. So it was never on TV. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, but you live you live to tell the tale, you know. That's and right. That tale will earn you a lot more than $2,000 yes. if you would yeah. it. But you know what I like about what you've just done? I also, um, when I came to 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 Australia, I was, uh, you know, involved with a lot of this acting and behind the scenes. And you will notice that on TV, they only show you maybe 25 minutes of a fully polished episode. It looks like everyone is just flowing through. They're answering the questions or they're not. But this takes days or even months to put together to get a 25 minute episode and yeah i just wish a lot of people would understand especially entrepreneurs that it's not what it yes. seems and there's a lot of work that an online business manager can do behind the scenes so that you can show up as a flamingo in a zoo yeah yeah absolutely absolutely a lot of my clients are very techie and savvy and they love building things in order like they get really excited about it but they recognize that there's only so much you can do on your own. And so I think with those people, the things that I help them with, yes, they could do, but we're getting there so much faster than if they were there on their own. And so you're right. It's like all this stuff that's behind the scenes and then the end product kind of speeds everything up. Absolutely. And I'm just having a visual of a flamingo standing on one foot, but there's a lot of mechanics, muscles that are making that happen behind the scenes. And it just looks graceful, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Natalia, I'm, I'm really excited about what we've created here and just getting to know you, your life story and your, um, you know, life experience. But is there any sort of last words that you might have to those people that are umming and ahhing, thinking, ah, you know what, I think I've got this. Why would I need to have a business manager behind the scenes? I think I have I know what my clients want. I know what I can give to them. Why would I need an extra um, pair of hands? What would you say to people like that? I guess in a nutshell, it just lets you do that better. So whether it means that it frees up your time because you don't have to be messing around in the back end of your systems, chasing things up, setting things up. That, you know, hour is an extra hour that you could spend with a client or doing whatever it is that you love to do. So it 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 creates scale for your impact when you've got people who can help you get there smoother, faster, more easily. Um, or maybe it means that instead of spending Saturday morning setting up an automation, you get to have Saturday off, you know, and there's a lot of value in that as well. Um, and so I think it comes back to the proverb that you shared before. If you want to go further, go together. It's it's harnessing what's around you so that the overall impact is much more positive. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough, Talia. I mean, for taking yourself out of your busy schedule. Um, you know, when you out of mentioned... my cave. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I was I was going to ask, I did mention a little bit earlier on that you have a pet uh, turtle. So mm -hmm. instead of flamingos, you went on and got a, a, a turtle. What, what, what's what, what's his name? His name is Crunch. Crunch. <laughs> he that... also ended up with me by accident. It was um, a friend of a friend of a friend had him. He's an eastern long neck tortoise. And then couldn't look after him anymore. So my sister adopted him and then she was moving into state. And it was a lot easier to get a tortoise to my house than to move a tortoise into state. And so now I have a tortoise. 
Wow. Okay. And then I found out they can live like 30 years. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so then, and is the crunch coming from Captain Crunch or is he just crunch in? He was crunch named up? by, I think she was two at the time, a two-year-old, and it's supposed to be Crush from Finding Nemo, but she just oh. said crunch. Absolutely. And so that's how that happened. <laughs> but interesting. The story is that you come across when you speak to <laughs> Melbourne Finanza right here. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> For sharing your journey and insights with us today i mean your Thank experiences you. and your tips um are very you know valuable for anyone that's looking to make their business thrive so many people get started and don't quite know that you don't necessarily have to be the be it and all of your business where some people can actually do um you know you know the kind of stuff that it is that you do helping them thrive in business so much needs to happen so much needs our attention and we only have so many hours in the day and if you can um you know release some of that work to an online business manager that would literally help you thrive you see i was flying Absolutely. this i was flying this weekend talia and i just thought of this you know with jetstar if you carry one kilogram more you automatically are charged an equivalent of a ticket of a seat you know for mm -hmm. just that extra kilogram um you know so it is very expensive to travel heavy so why don't you lighten your load with an online business and manager in the form yeah. of the, <laughs> the melbourne freelancer right here because so many people are being charged a lot more money for luggage they don't need to be carrying themselves yeah now yes. for, uh, for our viewers out there, if you found this episode as enlightening as I did, just don't forget to either rewatch this or send this to an entrepreneur, or business person, a coach or consultant that is struggling to, you know, thrive in their business. It could be one or two uh, insights that Talia has shared with us that could actually help them, um, you know, be doing, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And while you're at it, Make sure you subscribe to the Online Prosperity Show for more inspiring stories and practical advice from experts like Italia. Until next time, keep thriving for prosperity in all you do. Bye for now.